I like your shirt. Well, thank you so much. I had to pull it out. The only bummer is I've got all these uh, ring lights and I'm nervous, so I'm sweating, FYI. <laughs> Great. <laughs> nice shirt. Well, yeah. listen, nice musical. <laughs> I don't even but, have that one. <laughs> um, I know what I'm doing on July 3rd. By the way, it's also my 50th birthday, so I feel like you guys have given me a better gift than anybody. Happy birthday. Could give birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yes, I had to put on the sweatshirt, and, and yes, it is my birthday. How do you not milk that with the cast when it's coming out on Disney Plus on July 3rd, your birthday? Anyway, I hope you enjoy these interviews with the original cast of the Broadway Smash Hamilton, 11 Tony Awards, a Pulitzer Prize, a Grammy, you name it. What a thrill to be able to Zoom with some of the most talented human beings on this planet. I'd love it if you'd subscribe to this channel if you like what you see. If you don't, maybe you'll give me a second chance and still subscribe. And in the meantime, enjoy the interviews. Have a great, safe 4th of July holiday. Alexander Hamilton. First of all, I can't thank you both enough for this gift. Can you help me set the scene If on July 3rd, advice for how to create that theatrical experience at home? Oh, you just need a decent internet connection. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, July 3rd is also my 50th birthday, so I don't know what my husband's going to get me to top this. So thank you. Uh, <laughs> Have any of you seen it? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Help me set the scene. I'm in my house. What do I need? Do I need snacks? I know there's an intermission. Should I dress up? <laughs> yeah, girl. You know, it's your birthday. You got you to gotta go all out with this, okay? <laughs> uh, do you definitely need snacks? Uh, I don't know, you know, if y'all, if you like to have a drink or two, a little dope beverage, you know, don't go crazy though, because you don't want to be slumped for the second act. Uh, and, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, just with people you love, just make sure you're with people yeah. you love and people who you want to share a special moment with. I just don't take a shot every time they say my shot. You, <laughs> okay. will, you will not make it to the second act. Wear your, wear your pajamas and bring some popcorn yeah, and a big perfect. glass of wine. You, this one, this one, you can just pause the intermission so you don't need to worry about the line for the restroom or whatever. So you good, you good. Uh, yeah, I've is. experienced that line. It's brutal. <laughs> so I'm excited about that. Wear that shirt. Okay. <laughs> um, and, and most importantly, um, you know, come as you are, come as you are, because mm. um, whatever, you know, and, and literally you know, I'm, your whole family um, there's something for everybody in your family in this musical, which is the only reason why we, we get to talk about it so much. And uh, I'm excited for it to be yours. No one else was in the room where it happened, the room where it happened, the room where it happened. I can't wait to see this. I had the pleasure of seeing it on Broadway about six months after the original cast left. And of course, you, your vantage point changes. You control what you're seeing. What was the hardest thing for you to decide? What are people going to see? What is that vantage point here? Well, I think that the, the challenge existed throughout, which is every time you go in for a close-up or a medium shot, it means you're not seeing the surround. You're not right. seeing the ensemble. And I wanted to make sure to embrace the storytellers everywhere on stage. So we're very judicious about how we use our close-ups, which gives you intimacy. And I think you have real proximity to the emotionality and to the story. But I also wanted to celebrate the dance in the show, the, the physical language, which is such a big part of the story. So it was, it was important for me to give everyone the same seat. And so I wanted you to see things that you wouldn't have seen if you went to the theater, but also be reminded constantly that you're in a theater and this is a celebration of theater. What's incredible about what Tommy's done is that he's, in the press release, I think I say, everyone has the best seat in the house, but that's a lie because no one had the seat. No one gets to go behind King George as he walks down stage. No one gets to go above the stage as we throw Reynolds pamphlets uh, 50 feet in the air. Um, so, you know, it's uh, whether you're watching it on your phone or your tablet, I, I would recommend the biggest screen you can muster and as loud as you can, uh, but your mileage may vary. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. You've talked a lot about how this musical has always hit people differently depending on what we're going through. And of course, in light of what we're going through, and now you've seen a bunch of your lyrics on protest signs, the whole Black Lives Matter movement. Is there a lyric that is just resonating with you right now? Um, it's so funny, there's a, there's a part in the show where we have a character named Samuel Seabury, who was a real guy, uh, and he says, heed not the rabble who scream revolution, they have not your interests at heart. And Hamilton hears that and raps over it, he'd have you all unravel at the sound of screams, but the revolution is coming. Um, and to me, that is the dialogue. 
that is happening right now of, you know, this sound of revolution, this, um, these protests that are happening, that's the sound of change. That's the sound of a country reckoning with what kind of country it wants to be. Um, and that's, um, that hits in a different way than it did in 2015. Is there a lyric, if you could put a lyric from this on a sign and walk around with it now reflecting how you're feeling, how you're doing, what is that lyric for you that just <clears throat> resonates with you? Oh, I mean, definitely history has its eyes on you. I've, I've been, which we've, which we've seen a lot out there, but I, I, you know, a big part of my personal work in this moment I have found is like sort of questioning the ways in which I, I interact with, with capitalism and in all of the various forms that I participate in. I've moved on to the film and TV industry a lot now and like there, what kinds of accountability am I able on insisting upon with sort of this idea in my head that my choices say something about me? I am no longer at a point in my life where I have to say yes to everything. I, I, I bought my house, you know what I'm saying? Like my family is safe. I, I don't have to say yes to everything. And so the fact that I say yes to anything speaks something about myself and there better be like a real good solid foundation for why I said yes. And if a company I am working for falls short of that, I need to hold them accountable because history has its eyes on me just like it has its eyes on them. And uh, I hope that everybody is recording and keeping me accountable for my mistakes so that I can try to live up to the best version of myself. And I, I have been trying to figure out how to insist on that behavior from everybody else I'm working. Have you seen the film version that we're gonna see July 3rd? I have, David is not, but we can talk about that later. <laughs> Does it's, he not have access? Oh, I've been no. given access. It's yeah. not. That's not that. I just. I don't like watching myself, so I haven't watched it yet. But I want to watch all my friends, so After I'm going to watch it. Well, then just put a little hand over over the stuff that you're on, you, Christopher. Since you saw it, how has this affected you watching it again now? My level of adoration for the entire team that made it but especially the actors that I was fortunate enough to share the stage with for all of that time uh, has become a real benchmark for my own personal life, obviously. Um, but man, are they something. And the level of, of precision in storytelling and the level of character work and the, the obvious joy that just sort of leaps off of the screen is the same that I felt all of those many hundreds of times doing that show and, and, uh, to be able to watch it, uh, I kind of I kind of understand what the big deal is, you know. Uh, it, it, just an incredible company of actors. Did you cry? Did you get choked up? I did, but not at any of my parts. Um, <laughs> you know, I you know I, I I could I could I could talk for a, for days about the level of specificity and the and the and the, the joy that is expressed. Just watching this man right here do his work, I I you know in the first act, I'm oftentimes not on stage with him at the same time. And I, I remember seeing so much in the wings, but it's just not the same uh, yeah. when, you, when you're out front. And Tommy's gave, given us an, an incredible bird's eye view into, you know, the, the moments that you sometimes are too far back, you know, from the stage to actually see. Sure. Uh, and there's yeah. so many things going on, on uh, you know, on that stage that, that Tommy really helps to guide the eye. Uh, and, and every piece is just delicious. You know, the show has always inspired me in a lot of different ways, but especially now, hearing the lyrics and and mm. uh, and seeing what we created, um, it's an everlasting reminder that something really, a tool that's really powerful is the, the ability to like listen, the ability to listen to others, to take that and uh, ask yourself questions, educate yourself, and finally to advocate, to take that, what you've learned, what you've processed and take it out there and use your voice in order to create a world in which you want to live in. Lynn has talked about the access now that everybody gets with this coming out on Disney Plus. In regards to access, you guys didn't have to go through what we went through to get tickets to your show. So I'll start with you, Renee. What is that production or that show or that concert that you worked your butt off to try to get access to? Ooh, my first was a, 
Well, actually, I won't even say my first. I had the great privilege of at, right after we left um, Hamilton to go see Beyonce oh. <laughs> with uh, Leslie Odom Jr. I think the reason why I got the tickets was because <laughs> Leslie Odom Jr. got me the tickets. Matter of and fact, saw, and Anthony Jasmine were there too. Remember Anthony I know, Jasmine? Were there? Yeah, yeah. I remember. So it was literally the three of us with our significant others were sitting there watching another phenomenon, um, wow. and we were just you know like we were at school. Right. Yeah. I mean, gosh, Leslie and I saw the color purple together, um, the, the, the new production that came on Broadway. So, yeah, the, you got to you got to get out and get inspired by other people. And, and we definitely did. Well, it sounds like you also have to get the right friends to help get you access to some of these cool events. You guys are like the perfect group of friends. And here's the PS de resistance. When they were filming this, obviously they tell you, hey, FYI guys, we're filming this for a potential thing that we'll put up on the big screen or, or small screen later. Did it change anything about what you all did? I'll say yes and no. I mean, uh, no, because, you know, at this at this point, you know, this is this is after really the show has been reviewed. We, we've you know, our heroes have right. come, you know, that people the word is already sort of um, it's been decided what people think of the show. So we no longer have to. Um, um, prove that you know to anybody so it was really m about preserving this thing that we'd done at this point at by the time we shot this movie I'd done I play Burr I'd played Burr over 500 times so no but then I, I was really excited about the chance to um to layer in some some subtlety and some smaller moments that really wouldn't read in a 13, 1400 seat house, you know, once they brought the cameras in and you have the, you have the ability um, for the camera to come in closer. It gives you an opportunity to do a different kind of storytelling that I also like a lot. The chance to repeat the fact that we get to, you know, uh, Hamilton on Broadway, you know, it starts and then we, we don't stop until it's done with, with this thing, you know, we got to um, repeat a couple moments and consider, is there anything I want to change? Is there anything that I feel different this time? So, that was all exciting stuff. Hey, happy birthday. I know, I had to make it about me to start this thing off um, <laughs> because it's it's always about you guys. I can't tell you what a gift this is. And I know Lynn has talked a lot about how this, this whole musical hit people differently depending on what they were going through, what we were going through. And in light of what we're going through now, I'll start with you, Alex. Has this hit you differently watching this version now? Oh, that's a great question. You know, I, I, I admit, I have not yet been able to just take in the film for a while because in preparation for its release, I was so focused on listening to the sound and making sure that this is, you know, it's just so, and that it's, you know, the quote unquote, the most perfect rendition of the show possible. So I have yet to be able to just sit down and let the piece wash over me. I'm actually looking forward to doing that on July 3rd <laughs> because yeah. at that point I can't change anything anymore. It, it is what it is. Um, but I, I do feel like it, it's going to um, uh, allow me to uh, just take in the show and take in what that moment was because that was a very special moment in time for all of us and where we were in the show and where we were in the show's history. Um, so I, I think it's going to be very moving, especially in this time where we can't connect and we can't be together in a room. Like I would give nothing more than, be, than to be able to sit with Andy and Tommy and Lynn and be able right. to listen together. But uh, I think we're going to be longing for the, the feeling of connection and longing for uh, um, to be able to, to high five each other again. I was gonna say one thing about your question that I think is really, really a wonderful question is, one of the things that I think speaks to me most about the show now is that we're dealing with an imperfect situation in the way our country was made, in the way our, our these founding fathers and mothers took care of us and pushed us into existence. There was problems, there was confusions, mm -hmm. and there were mistakes. But somehow we fought through because we all wanted something. And I think now, the, the musical resonates in another new way because we're pointing okay. out that in history, there have been a lot of unanswered questions and there have been a lot of muddiness and you have to go through the muddiness to get through to clarity. So we find ourselves in the cyclical position, but that's honest and that's empowering to say, we must have changes in front of us and we must walk into that battle. Well, and you know what? It's work. It's forcing us to do a deeper dive yeah. into our history. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. After watching George Floyd murdered for eight minutes and 46 seconds, it kind of put me in a specific state of being that I don't think I can really move from or any black person in this yep. country can. And I think uh, having a show 
where our founding fathers who were white men played by people of color saying, hey, no matter what, speak out against the injustices, uh, uh, try and uh, uh, tell people about the country you wish to see and then fight for the country that you wish to see that you believe that it should be. I think that's very important right now. Um, I think it's yeah. important for everyone to remember that that came from white voices then and it's echoed by black voices now. Um, and I think that's a true connecting tissue for this country. Possibly, who knows, time will tell, but hopefully this is the beginning of some real, actual, sustainable change. Um, I know what I'm doing on July 3rd. And what will you be doing July 4th? Because the timing of this and the fact that we get to watch it as a nation the day before our nation's birthday is huge. Uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to be with my sisters. I'm just probably just hanging out with my sisters and enjoy, enjoy their company. I'm actually going to be with my brother and my cousin um, and uh, maybe get to see um, my aunt, my uncle and my mother uh, because they're driving from uh, Illinois to come mm -hmm. visit them. And so we're going to go meet them and celebrate my brother's birthday because his birthday is on the 4th. Oh, well, tell him happy birthday then for me. I will. And Anthony, how about you? Um, I, you know, I don't know. I'll probably be somewhere in Brooklyn, uh, <laughs> chilling, um, watching it with, you know, with family, honestly. You know, I, yeah. think, you know, I think my mom and uh, the rest of my family are super excited to see this. And uh, oh. even though they've seen the show more times than anybody <laughs> in, in the world, but. They are they are so excited to to watch it in this way. So I think I think you know we're gonna we're gonna be probably hunkered down at the crib just watching it. I know you talked about how what you this whole thing kind of came to you on vacation. I know vacations are hard to come by right now, but Tommy, can Lynn ever go on a vacation again? And he comes back and you not say, all right, what masterpiece do you got for us now? I just always make sure to answer if I'm around when he calls. And if he says we're going, we're going, we're going left, then I go left with him. So uh, whatever, if, if he happens to take a vacation, I will make sure to find out what he was reading on that vacation. Lynn, do you feel more pressure when you do get the occasional vacation? Uh, no, <laughs> although, you know, I, I do have to say the success of Hamilton has taught me that like, take vacations, good ideas happen when you're not looking for them. Um, and I think that uh, that's a nice, lesson to take away for someone who's increasingly busy. Congratulations. I just, I wish we could do this in person, but maybe another time. Yeah, thank well, you. Well, happy Maybe. birthday in advance. Yes, oh, thank you. Birthday. And congratulations on being a new dad. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I buried the lead. Have a great day, you guys. <laughs> Yeah, I can't wait. It's incredible. It was originally supposed to come out on big screens in about a year and a half from now, but they moved it up in light of everything going on. So thank you, Disney Plus. Hamilton streams exclusively on Disney Plus July 3rd.